This is Josephine from The Point Shop. I'm going from California all the way to Chicago, and this is my very last stop. And I'm so lucky to be with Ashley Weeder because he's not only the Academy Director, he's also the Artistic Director. So it's really lucky for the kids that go to the Academy here and for the dancers as well. So it's like a nice little thread that takes you to the company. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so can you tell us a little bit more about your personal background? Sure. Um, you know, I, I was very fortunate. I, um, as a very young boy, I went to the Royal Ballet School. Um, but at that time, um, the upper school and the Royal Ballet Studios were all in the same building. Seeing um, Sir Frederick Ashton and Kenneth McMillan rehearse, you know, the company and to see Dame Nanette de Valois, um, you know, all, all their presence, I think it informs you about a lot of things that, that later in your life you remember those and then they become key elements in what, what we now want to do here in our, in our academy um, and how our academy has access to the company and, uh, and vice versa. So I think it's very important. Um, so I, I went through the upper school. I then joined the Royal Ballet. But I think that the opportunity, um, which really came from Rudolf Nureyev, well, which was to go to London Festival Ballet, which is now English National Ballet. Um, at the time, he had um, created a Sleeping Beauty for them, and he was doing a Romeo and Juliet for them. And I had known Rudolf since I was a little boy doing his Nutcracker at Covent Garden. So I went, I went to, to English National Ballet and um, under John Field, who was the director, uh, and working with Betty Anderton, I, I had an amazing experience there. And I think to, to be given so much at such, such a young age was uh, incredibly um, invaluable to me. Um, and then I left London and I went to Australia and joined the Australian Ballet. And it's, it's in Australia where I met Gerald Arpino. Wow. And Gerald Arpino invited me to come to New York to meet Robert Joffrey, which I did. And I joined the Joffrey Ballet um, until that would be 1989 when I went to San Francisco Ballet. Mm -hmm. Robert Joffrey had passed away in 88. And, um, and I thought that what Helgi was doing in San Francisco was pretty amazing. So I went to San Francisco where I spent the next 18 years of my life um, as a dancer. And then I retired, I became ballet master and then the assistant to Helgi. Having all of these transitions from yes. Europe and Australia and San Francisco. <laughs> so what are you bringing to Joffrey? So I think that when we built the academy here, I think that one of the key things was we wanted all the kids in the academy or in our community engagement program to be able to see what is the end result. Mm. I think that building the trainee program, um, letting them, one, take class with the company. So we've always had that where, um, you know, not the entire trainee program, but every week um, a certain percentage of them takes company class. Yeah. At the end of every two weeks, the entire trainee program will have taken company class. And that goes on year round. A few of your trainees, mm -hmm. I heard, got to go to Paris with you this they year. They did. That's so, so special. So we, for, for most of our big productions, um, we uh, use the trainees. Um, uh, not, a, not a huge amount because they have their own training and they have their own programs. But I think that uh, we're allowed to have 10. And so we try to space it out through the year. So right now, you know, we went to Paris in the fall for glass pieces. So we took some of our trainees to Paris. Uh, there are trainees in Swan Lake, mm -hmm. also in the Nutcracker, also in Anna Karenina. Um, so I think that giving them an experience to work with the company and to, to know what it what it really takes to be a professional dancer and to know and prepare yourself for that professional career. I think that the more we can do to help them, uh, the better. A lot of companies are now incorporating this trainee <laughs> program, but for them it's pretty new. For you, you've had it for a very long time. We, we've now been doing nearly nearly 10 years. Yes. So you've seen the progression of a lot of these dancers coming through your system. I think that, you know, we... 
we are not of one school. So we are not... You are the, not of one school either. <laughs> I, I'm, well, and I think that's partly why. Exactly. Is that, um, you know, the Royal Ballet School, when, when I knew the Royal Ballet School, I think that Devawa, she took the best of the French training, the Russian training, the British style, and, and made a syllabus. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, there are so many great, great training programs and so you take the best from all of them. Yes. And the ultimate goal is that we want a foundation that is the structure of classical ballet. And I think that the demand for a dancer today in a company, having to go from something very classical like the Sleeping Beauty or Swan Lake into the Alexander Ekmans of this world or Wayne McGregor's of this world, you know, you, you, it's asking a lot of your body, and so I think that it's important that we start with the very basic principles of classical ballet. Um, and so I think in our training program, we try to make sure that we're aligned in our ideas and that those ideas um, materialize into a, a very well-rounded curriculum. Mm. And I think that what has been fantastic about the training, the trainee program is that over a quarter of the company have come through that program. You know, we're a company of 46, so I think that's a lot of people and, and they've, they've all done incredibly well. The way that a lot of co companies work, they have a very similar look. And that reflects in their trainees too. Right. You know, you see a lot of the dancers that look similar to the company dancers, but for you, you have a complete mixed bag. Well, our world is not made up of one color, one look. And I think that Robert Joffrey probably put it best is that a great dancer comes in all shapes and sizes. And so I think that has always been the fabric of the Joffrey Ballet. Um, and I certainly believe in that as a director. And so our, our, you know, our company, our academy, are a reflection of the city that we live in, which is this great city of Chicago. I saw a lot of international dancers in your training program as well. Yes. So you had some dancers from Japan, and Spain, and Mexico. Australia, um, from the UK. Um, in the company, we have dancers from 16 different countries. And I think that what it tells us, and what it is, what is so beautiful is that dance is a universal language and we can come from all over the world, but we recognize the beauty and the value of dance.